spring, clay, and a pan. We have an elastic spring placed on a horizontal platform, right there. A pan of mass M is attached to the top end of the spring, which compresses it at distance D. So here's your uh, pan, it went down at distance D. A piece of clay is then dropped and hits the pan, and it's dropped from a height H above where the pan is. The clay strikes the pan and sticks to it. What is the speed of the clay just before it hits the pan? What is the speed of the pan right after the clay strikes it? And what is the period of oscillation of the clay pan system? A few more questions. How much is the spring stretched at the moment when the velocity of a pan is a maximum? And if a smaller diameter spring is placed inside the first one, so what we're doing is putting another spring right in the middle there, so two springs can support the pan, how would it change the period of oscillations? What is the speed of the clay just before it hits the pan? Well, you can either use third kinematics or conservation of energy. And since we just did the energy unit a couple units back, we'll go ahead and use that. Initial energy equals final. MGH is 1 half MV squared. And V of the clay right before it's the pan is square root of 2GH, which shows you you can never forget anything you learned earlier in physics. And also, if you looked at this problem and it just scared you, you couldn't figure out what to do, don't give up. Sometimes the first few parts are very trivial and you don't want to give those points away. What is the speed of the pan just after the clay strikes it? Now you just use conservation of momentum. You have a perfect inelastic collision. So you say MV of the clay is equal to the total mass of the system, which is the clay in the pan, times the velocity of the pan. You solve for the velocity of the pan. Now the only thing that can go wrong now is if you leave the answer with this value here, because you weren't given that. However, you found it on the previous slide, the previous part. So make sure you go ahead and put that into your answer. So it's m times the square root of 2gh divided by little m plus big M. So a couple pitfalls there. One, not even working this because you thought it would be too hard, and it's actually quite trivial. It's just conservation of momentum and making sure that you express your answer in terms of the givens and not an intermediate value there, that velocity of the clay. What is the period of oscillation of the clay pan system? We know the equation for the period of simple harmonic motion is 2 pi times the square root of the total mass of what's oscillating divided by k. When we know the total mass is going to be little m plus m, big M, we don't know k, or do we? We can derive it. Before we drop the clay, we know, well, we always know Hooke's law, but before we drop the clay, the mass of the pan had depressed the spring at distance d. So you had mg in the down direction, and let's make a capital M there, and in the up direction, you had kd. So Newton's second law, mg equals kd, and we solve for the spring constant. So we put that value for the spring constant in over here, and then we replace mass total with little m plus big M, and we just clean it up a little bit, and the period will be 2 pi times the square root of little m plus big M times d divided by big M times g. How much is the spring compressed at the moment when the velocity of the pan is a maximum? First thing to state is the velocity in simple harmonic motion is a maximum when the acceleration is zero. So we're going to use Newton's second law and Hooke's law. And what we'll have is the force acting down is just the total mass times g. And then you have the restorative force here, which is going to be k delta x. And delta x is what we're looking for. And let's take down as positive. So the sum of the forces will be the gravitational force minus the spring restoral force. That equals ma, but we've said a is equal to zero. So we solve k delta x is equal to this, and we find our position delta x is little m plus big m times g divided by k. 
Now, you can't leave it like that. We want to put in the value for k that we found. We weren't given k, so your answer has to be in things that we were given. We substitute in capital MG over D for k, and we get our displacement, little m plus big M times D divided by big M. If a smaller diameter spring is placed inside the first one, so two springs can support the pan, so what we have, here's our pan, we have the one spring, and then we have another little one inside, how would that change the period of oscillations? Well, if they're both supporting at the same time, they're, they're in parallel. And when you put springs in parallel, the effective spring constant will increase. Since the period is inversely proportional to the spring constant, the period will decrease. So when you look at the equation we have here, for the period is 2 pi m over k, square root of m over k. When k increases in the denominator, that means the period will decrease.